Welcome to Lesson 4 of Advanced Saxophone Lessons Made Easy, Developing Your Technique. Now that you are able to achieve proper air support and articulate crisply with responsive reeds, it is time to work on developing your technique. Everyone wants to play fast while making it sound easy. Unfortunately, not everyone can do this with confidence. The only secret to doing this is exactly what we have discussed in the previous lessons, that is, slowly develop the involved muscles so they are capable of performing at their highest level. Most everyone is impressed when listening to recordings of Charlie Parker and John Coltrane and think they can never play as fast or as smooth. The key to their talent is practicing those licks for many hours each day before becoming big names on the jazz scene. If you were to practice as much, you could play just as good if not better. But let's be honest. Who has time to practice that much every day? Instead of focusing on how long you practice, why not focus on making every minute you do practice as effective as possible? I will go into greater detail about practicing in Lesson 7. For now, let's discuss how you can maximize your practice time with regards to developing smooth and quick technique. An important thing to be aware of as you are increasing speed is to periodically look at your finger positions. You want all of your fingers to be as close to the keys as possible, if not resting on the keys. This way you do not waste time and effort finding the key that your finger is supposed to press down. Try practicing in front of a mirror and pay close attention to your fingers as you play simple exercises and scales. I used to have a lot of problems keeping my pinky finger and fourth finger close. Since these fingers are normally weaker than others, they are much more difficult to control. If you are having the same problem, Use practice drills that focus only on these fingers and start off very slowly. We will look at several exercises that build good technique in just a moment. There are many method books and etude books you can buy for additional exercises. However, I recommend that you first develop your technique by playing scales on arpeggios. By playing scales you already know, you can take your mind off of the notes you're playing and focus only on your technique. You may even want to leave out all articulation at this point. Again, start off slowly. I recommend playing at a tempo of 8th note equals 74 beats per second. Make sure your fingers are close to the keys and that you are playing in time with the metronome. When you are comfortable doing this, increase the metronome to 8th note equals 96 beats per second. Keep increasing the tempo as you feel comfortable until you can play scales at 16th note equals 120 beats per second evenly and in tempo. Now let's look at some exercises to work on that will help strengthen your weak fingers and make those difficult intervals simple. Notice the repeat symbols. Each exercise is intended to be played many times in a continuous loop. Use these exercises as a guide for any other intervals you encounter that prove difficult. Again, play through them slowly at first, say around 66 beats per second, and then gradually build up speed.
You will notice I wrote fork over the F sharp in these next two exercises. The fork key or side F sharp key is on the side just above the E flat key. This is an alternate fingering that may seem a bit unusual at first, but can come in handy when you need to play F sharp quickly. Now let's move on to the left hand exercises. You may find you are having difficulty with the A to C sharp interval. If so, focus only on those two notes until it becomes more comfortable. Feel free to use these exercises and make up some of your own when you find intervals you are having trouble with. Once you can play these smoothly while maintaining a steady tempo, you will be well on your way to having excellent technique.